I was born in 69, so, you know, the majority of the music that was, was coming out that was cool and hip had to have synthesizers in it. I've always been um, in tune with electronic sound. Here in Detroit, there was music that, that had these electronic sounds that were being played on the radio. Or some, some of them, in, in, in many cases, are just the mood of electronic music. Like, Papa was Rolling Stone, you know, which didn't have any electronics in it, but it was like an electronic record. The concept was so dark. Most of, of urban music nowadays is all electronic based anyway, you know, so it's like our love for uh, synthesizer and black music is really, is really quite important. Um, you know, I mean, whether you listen to that new Diplo track that he did with uh, Usher, you know, or you go right on back to, to Parliament Funkadelic and, you know, Ohio Players and, and all that stuff. Computer World was the first experience with Kraftwerk, and when I heard that, it was just, you know, it was all over, you know. It had such an impact on me, but Soul Sonic Force and, and uh, uh, Nucleus and, you know, all this the stuff that was happening with electro music at the time really put it in, into, into serious focus. I have a cousin who made a record with Juan Atkins, it's called Technicolor. And um, one day I went over to his parents' house and he had like DX7 and he had, you know, all these different synthesizers and stuff. And, um, you know, he let me play around with this, this Prophet 6 track. And um, that was when Harold Faltermeyer, Axel F came out, which was a big record here, big record, but it's a corny record though, but it's big. Like popcorn, basically, you know? And, um, and by me playing Axel F on this little synthesizer, it made me realize, yeah, you know, I can explore, I can, can really feel something out. Ditching the analog world and getting into the digital world is nothing new. You know, for me, or even with Kraftwerk, when they did Electric Cafe, it was all in Sinclair and Sinclair. And I remember being hurt because when I read, you know, they're using this one machine to do that album, but Computer World and Trans Europe Express blows away that album completely. You know, it just didn't, really didn't make any sense to me. I've always kept my synthesizers. I've always, um, you know, if I've sold any synthesizers, it's been digital shit, because, you know, you could do that in the computer now, you know, but the analog stuff is really important to, to keep hold of. When I did the Modular Pursuits record, the concept was that it was just raw sound that comes out of those modulars, and that's the way it is, you know. From beginning to end, no edits, no nothing, that's the way it is. It gave me the opportunity to do something that um, I don't really see ha happening so much. I saw it happening in the 60s and the 70s where, you know, you'd have these sound effect records and the modular gave me the opportunity to make a record that, that I felt hadn't been made like that in years, which is Modular Pursuits. It was first a pure expression, but the commercial aspect of releasing it was that it can be used as a tool as a DJ, used as a tool for a producer, used as a tool for, for whatever, and uh, a tool in a way that if someone is interested in modular but can't afford it or interested in listening to it or interested in collecting it or, or whatever. The modular stuff was always the unattainable, big room kind of, you know, science laboratory uh, stuff or that you saw on a Herbie Hancock cover or, you know, you saw in a, in a textbook or, or something. Before the Eurorack format, a lot of these guys that are in the modulars now um, probably wouldn't have been able to have it. It would have just been one or two cats that would have got it, you know. It's small, it's cheap. A lot of that stuff is 300 bucks, 400 bucks or whatever. And you can just fill up a box for the cost of, you know, buying a hardware synthesizer. 
the raw sound of, a, of, of an oscillator is, is much more impressive to me than what the sound of a, of a hardwire synthesizer is. But, you know, you really got to get into it. You really got to be, be into it. And it's, it's, it's almost like your, your mind has to work on a scientific level than on, on, a, you know, on a musician's level. The modular just makes it possible to repatch and other other areas make shit that doesn't seem like it'll be right become right because it's not supposed to be patched that way, you know. I get a little little crazy about it. Um, you know, how many filters does a person really need? And I got a lot of fucking filters, you know. Unfortunately, it gets a little too complex too because if I decide to unpatch stuff <laughs> and then try to repatch and do some new things and, and whatever, then I could sit here, you know, dicking around with with patch cords all day long instead of making tracks, you know. So, um, so it's like finding that balance in in relation to being creative um, musically and being creative sonically.